This play is so glitchy. We have two guys that get in free. We got the cornerback on the right side who chases Russell Wilson out of the pocket. And then we have the linebacker on the other side that meets him. A lot of times it's going to come right through the A gap, but you have a lot of different options here. This guy here doesn't even get blocked. This is more like the B gap pressure that I'm talking about. As you can see, he just gets in unblocked. As all the blitzes I'm going to show you guys are going to be this exact same way, where this defender just gets right through the A or B gap. <laughs> For the fastest, cheapest, most reliable coins on the market, check out my coin sponsor, MMOXP.com, and use discount code MONEYSHOT to get 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff of the Mad Cheese, as always. Got a new defensive video for you guys today. I'm going to show you guys a brand new breakdown for defense that I'm planning on showing you guys in gameplay starting next week. And I had to go back to the Las Vegas Raiders defensive ebook to get that uh, formation. The formation itself is the nickel 3 3 odd. This is a pretty rare formation. I think it's only in like the Vikings, the Patriots. It's only in like five different playbooks, but the Raiders is one of them. And this particular uh, formation is going to be a bit of an upgrade over a previous formation that I put out as far as size. Uh, if you guys have been following this channel lately, I've been using the quarter normal quite a bit. I like that defense because you can get a lot of speed on the field and you can almost recreate uh, what is essentially a lot of different defensive looks. More specifically, the 3 4 odd. The 3 4 odd is probably my favorite defense because of spacing that you can get. It's really good for run fits because you get good, um, you have the ability to close up inside lanes and get outside leverage with the outside linebackers. It's a really good defense, but it's a little on the slow side because you really can't do anything but have linebackers in the, uh, you know, the outside linebacker and inside linebacker spots. You can't can't swap them out for safeties like you can for certain defenses which is something a lot of people tried to figure out how to do now this particular defense today i'm going to show you guys how to basically create a 3-4 look out of a 3-3 look but the best part about it is you have the option to put uh safeties at these linebacker spots like i said you couldn't do that in uh, 3-4 and a lot of other defenses so what i'm going to do for my substitutions for this is i'm going to take these guys out and i'm typically going to put safeties in at these spots now the raiders don't have a ton of great uh safety options but it really doesn't matter because safeties are just better than linebackers especially in pass coverage in general so i'm just going to fill it with whatever i can because they don't really have anybody that's uh that's too great but i have a couple of leftover safeties so that's where i'm going to put them over here though i'm going to want to make sure that i put my fastest uh cornerback which i think is this guy here if i remember correctly i think this guy had like a 96 speed but i'll double check that whoever is your fastest cornerback you want to put this spot they're going to basically take the spot of the outside linebacker um you know or if i i mean i might be able to put a safety here if i have like a really fast safety left over which i do but like i said i want my fastest guy that regardless of position cornerback safety whatever if your opponent's running the ball a lot you probably want to put a safety there but if they're passing the ball a lot and you're going to be blitzing a lot because this is going to be the the cornerback's going to get after the quarterback a lot you're going to want to put your fastest guy there so i'm pretty sure it was bennett the only other thing that you really want to mess with here is i'm going to take out this um defensive end spot and put my best linebacker here because basically um this spot is going to be rushing the passer a lot but i want to put my best pass rusher in crosby somewhere else along the line somewhere where he's going to um you know get after the quarterback every single play so i want to have him on one of these three defensive linemen more particularly towards the edge so i want to have him on one of these edge spots so he can go after the passer every single time uh because this spot here will go it will drop back into coverage quite a bit i really haven't figured out my favorite coverage yet but there are are uh, a good series uh, there's probably like six plays i'm gonna go over in the video today now number one you have the overload three press this is a matching cover three which is typically what i like to run i'll go over my coaching adjustments in a minute but this is a blitz that you can do out of cover three and you can also do the exact same blitz out of cover zero so you really can see how these two plays are pretty much identical and you're going to get pressure the exact same way you also have a couple of good coverages cover four drop of course is still gonna be my favorite run defense because cover four is always the best run defense since the safeties play the run first and then my favorite pass coverage is going to be the cover six and that is because this is a full matching cover six similar to the cover six trap that i put up from the big nickel over g this is a matching cover six on both sides so you're going to get uh, one of the better coverages this is probably my favorite pass coverage in general is the cover six so that's my favorite pass that's my favorite run defense and these two are my favorite blitzes at the same blitz out of a zone and out of a man giving me a lot of flexibility for my coaching adjustments, like I say, you just want to make sure you have your zone coverage to match, and I'm also going to put my auto alignment to base. Those are the most important ones because putting it to match will help out with the cover six and the cover four, I guess, a little bit, or the cover three, rather, because the cover four is not a match in cover four, which I would prefer, but they don't necessarily have that. Then you get to the auto alignment to base. This is just so all the defenses look the same pre-snap until you make your adjustments if you decide to do that. Before I get into the video, all these breakdowns are in my ebook. so if you guys want more help on offense or defense, you can download these or any of my ebooks 
simply by clicking the links in the description or the top end comment. Now, for the uh, the blitzes, I'll go do the blitzes in a minute. I think it's better probably to do the cover four drop and the cover six because these have the easiest setup, but they're setups you're gonna want to do in every single play. You know, what I mean, this is this is idea. The concept of this defense is the setup's really simple. All you really want to do is bring this guy down into what would be an outside linebacker spot if you were in a 3-4. That's the whole idea. I'm trying to mirror the 3-4. You can see now, if we just look at this, I'm going to bring something up here. It looks like a 3-4. You have your three down linemen. You have your two linebackers, which are actually safeties. You have your outside linebacker on one side, which is a cornerback. And then the other side, you have an actual linebacker. But this is essentially the look I'm trying to create. I'm trying to create a 3-4 look. I have the same flexibility as I do a normal 3-4. If I want to pinch the defensive line, I can do that by hitting the D-pad to the left and down. And if I want to spread the linebackers, I can do that too by hitting the D-pad to the right and up. And now you can see that linebacker gets outside a little bit. Typically, these guys will too. But I, I, pro I probably moved them manually. But like I said, if I do this against any look, against a large deep offense, a, a small offense like I have here with all these wide receivers, I can maintain inside leverage by pinching the defensive line so there's no real good inside run lanes and i could also maintain uh the outside because these these um you know cornerbacks and this linebacker are outside wide enough that they can really help hold down the edge now in cover four i'm going to want to bring these guys down because that's part of the the, the good thing of cover four is that these these uh safeties will act like linebackers because as long as i don't guess pass if i guess pass they'll go in their drop back but if i'm expecting run bringing them down will help out with the run much quicker. You'll see if I don't guess past, these guys will walk down and fill their run lanes, which is something that you don't really get from any other zone defense or any other any other defense period. Now, I also have the ability to hard flat if I really think they're gonna run, because this isn't a match in cover four. Normally, I wouldn't say hard flat when in cover four match, because you, you override the matching principles and take away what's good about it. This here, there is no matching principles. It's not a matching cover four. So you can hard flat to take away short passes, to take away, uh, you know, to be better in the outside run contain. Because when you hard flat, uh, I mean, cover four in general has a, a weakness when it comes to outside underneath these drop back cornerbacks. When these cornerbacks drop back, they're, they're pretty much going to, um, you know, let anything get open underneath. I could also, since I have a tight formation, I can base a line like I just did. But these guys here, are, that's the weakness. So since that's the weakness, if you hard flat, you can take that away. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna let the play run. Hopefully I get some run plays. I don't know if I will, but you can see we got drags and then since I hard flat, they're all over that. And then I probably should have stayed in my area since I had the hard flats. That was my fault because that was actually my area. But they ran a double drags play. And the hard flats definitely took care of those drags. You know what I mean? Like that's that's really the the good thing about the hard flats. I would say hard flatting in this defense is probably the way to go. But other than that, like I said, this defense and a lot of the base defenses I'm going to show you, all you really got to do is move this cornerback in so he gets in this position. Once he's in this position, he's in a good spot. So um, I went ahead, like I said, I base aligned again. And I have options as far as pitching the defensive line, spraying the linebackers, but this is probably a good look against this offensive formation because the receivers are in tight, so I want my cornerbacks in tight. And this is the look right here. Like I said, I'll try to stay home and actually cover my area a little bit better this time if there's pass plays. And you can see, you know, there's not a lot of opportunity there. He only gets a few yards on a little flat route because the linebacker's all over it. So a very good um, base defense. Now I went ahead and I backed out so I could pick that cover for one more time. We're going to switch formations into a I form close. We're going to try to go random run plays same setup like i say you just want to bring these uh these uh, these guys down anytime that the receivers are in tight you can bring the cornerbacks down too because there's less chance of them getting um you know beat outside i mean you can just straight up press you don't have to manually bring everybody down but you want to pack the box i don't know what i'm going to see here because i still picked random but this is going to be your look and we got a packed box look um anytime somebody's in a formation that looks like it could run as you can see here i, I you know he, there was nowhere to go and we got a little bit of a, a pressure from the uh you know from a, a little bit of a containment pressure i guess you should say but uh, this is the look so like i said I'll, I'll bring everybody down i'll go ahead and i'll press and i'll align i'll base align i'll press to bring those guys as close to those receivers as possible but like i said i'm really trying to get some run plays here just to show you guys how this run defense works and i picked the run formation and we're still not really getting it but uh, you see the coverage there from the hard flats. It takes away a lot of stuff as that was, um, you know, that was the, uh, the the speed out route. Any hard flat or any cover two uh, is going to take away uh, that particular route. So it's helping with the coverage. It's helping with the pass coverage as well. Here we finally get a run play and you can see it's shut down. Um, the, the safety didn't even get a chance to come into play there. 
which is kind of what I was hoping for. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, Max Crosby is such a beast. So, like I said, just bring these safeties down, bring that cornerback in, recreate that 3-4 look. You just have a lot more speed on the field. That's the whole idea here. Hopefully, we'll get a few more run plays as we actually get a pass play. And that flat was wide open as that guy just didn't react at all. That's, uh, I don't know who 41 is. The Raiders don't have a lot of talent on defense. But he really didn't react at all. I think that was the, uh, that's the linebacker side? Or is that the corner? Yeah, that's the linebacker side. So, Spillane's fast, but his, his reaction time there was really poor as he just let that running back get outside. There was nobody else in his area. In that hard flat area, he probably should have covered it a little bit better. But we're going to do this one more time. Like I said, hoping to get some run plays here as we don't get that much better reaction, though. And we get, uh, we get another hit on the quarterback as we're getting some pretty good pressure. Better pressure than we probably should get from this look so like i said one more time hopefully we get another run play because that was kind of the plan here but uh we got the pack box look and uh, we finally get a run play and the safety does make the play there which is perfect so i can end on that play because i really just want to always show that which is why this guy doesn't play the run first he walks right down into the hole and you can see he meets the running back right there i mean we had somebody get off the edge already to make the play but if he didn't look how this safety just comes right down into the box and makes that play every single time. That's what makes this the number one run defense is because we have a nine-man run commit every single time if we don't catch pass. The cover four is also a really good pass defense, but we also have uh, the cover six, which is probably a better pass defense. Same setup here. Bring this guy down to the box. You always want to bring this guy down to the box. That's This is for run defense. Your pre-snap setup is always about run defense. It's not about pass defense. You always want to set up in a way that eliminates the most obvious running uh, plays, especially against a shotgun like this, where the only real option is going to be an inside zone, which is more like a handoff to the left. Now, this is perfect because on this particular setup, we have the best of both worlds uh, because you have a cover four on one side, which means this safety is going to play the run just like a cover four I just showed you. But the other side, you got to cover too. So if it's some sort of outside run, he's going to do a better job of maintaining this outside all the way out here. So if you're facing stretches and tosses, if you have this guy on the right side, he's going to do a better job of trying to cut that off to the outside. But what I like about this play is, like I said, it is a true matching uh, defense on both sides. Even though the left side is a matching cover four, the right side is also a soft squat. Anytime you see a soft squat, that is the matching cover two version of cover two. So if you see cloud flats, it's like a prevent. If you see hard flats, they're playing aggressively underneath. Soft squat will do either. It's a matching defense. So since I have that, I really have the best of both worlds. Now the, the cover two safety is still a little bit suspect. Sometimes I'll put this guy, if I expect my opponent to pass, I'll put him on a deep zone and then I'll use the, the, the three rack hook. Three rack hook is like the better version. If you have like your regular vert hook, the three rack hook is a much better version. That'll follow much better than the vert hook. So if, if I leave it like this, I'll always leave the three rack hook alone because the vert hook is a much, uh, it's a worse uh, zone defense. So I want to use her that side. But if I do go full deep coverage, I can also use her Spillane here. I'll stay here because I want to keep that uh, the way that it is. But then I'll drop back if I want to give up. I and mean, it's my choice. If I want more coverage or more pass rush. If I want more pass rush, I'll leave Spillane alone. If I want more coverage, I'll, I'll do it that way. There is one more defense that I do want to show before I get to the blitzes. And that is the cover three cloud. What I like about this particular defense is uh, cover three cloud is like one of the hardest defenses to hit a one play touchdown against. So if you have a guy throwing deep on you a lot, you can switch over to this and it'll take that away. You can also play over the top coverage. Um, I would say if you're running this defense a lot though, you probably wanna set your zone flats, uh, your zone drops, which is something I'm trying to avoid because I mostly run matching defenses here. Uh, but this is something that you can do because the cloud flat, I'd rather that cloud flat drop back, but I would all, also rather have drop back further than, than a cloud flat is designed to drop back. Let's go and let's run this. Like I said, this is a very hard to, uh, to, to you know, pick apart defenses i actually probably should have followed that drag that was my fault i followed it to a certain way but then i was like when i saw the quarterback running away i was like there's no way he's never going to throw all the way across the field and he did so like i said same setup just bring these uh bring this cornerback in that's all you really got to do on all these defenses if you want to at any point in time you could kick this blitz up a notch and just send this cornerback. That's one of the benefits of this particular uh, thing if, if, is you always have the option to blitz that cornerback. You bring him in, and in any of the coverages I'm showing you, you can decide to blitz him if you want to kick it up a notch. If you're going to do that, though, you probably want to put this guy in the curl flat to replace, and then you're just going to be covering the middle all by yourself. So that's something that I would find, uh, like I said, any one of these defenses you can do, but I don't really want to do that. As you can see, um, it kind of leaves me bare in coverage. As you can see here, this blitzing cornerback does come right around the edge and get right in Russell Wilson's ear. So there is definite potential to blitz this guy as often as you like. And that includes we have a cover three seam. Like I said, I don't prefer 
regular cover threes i like the ones that actually match so anytime you see like a light pink uh you know the 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 flats that always means it's matching so i can go with the cover three seam with cover three um i can run this just like this and it's a pretty good coverage or i can bring this guy in and just put him on a blitz once again got to replace that with something either a hard flat or a curl flat as you can see i did right there and then i just have to bring this guy down and put him uh you know guest pass hover the gap and this will give me an opportunity like i said i gotta engage a little bit as you can see here I actually got the pick I actually dropped back all over that but uh, i didn't really get to see what the pressure did but that's really all in the running back this is not like an exotic blitz that's going to um, come in if the running back's blocked and a lot of times the running back will pick that up in reality if you want to get um you know pressure from uh you know with the, if the running back is blocking it's better just to blitz both linebackers and bring this guy down and a lot of times um you know that guy will get in off the gap uh, as you can see once again i mean cover three is still pretty um you know it's the same as as cover four if the cornerback drops back you can get open underneath it but you still don't get much so you can blitz both linebackers just blitz all linebackers which is d-pad to the left and down and then if you spread everybody you have a better opportunity for the uh, the linebacker to come in which is something i'm going to show you in some future blitzes as well as you can see right here he just runs right through the a gap which is really the basis of this entire defensive package if i go to the replay the blitzes i'm going to show you guys all the blitzes i'm going to show you guys are going to be this exact same way where this defender just gets right through the a or b gap because that's how this particular defensive alignment has the most success it's not blitzing off the edge it's blitzing right through the middle and i did that with only five rushers so five rushers five blockers maybe six blockers it looks like we had a check and release from the running back but uh yeah six blockers and we still get instant they got pressure right through the middle the next two plays i'm going to show you guys are blitzes that use the exact same concept they're just kind of pre-set up that way we have the overload three press which is a, once again a matching cover three with the exact same blitzing concept as the pinch zero now i'm starting off with the cover three once again bring this guy in every single time that's the look you're recreating cover you're recreating a, a three four odd but after that you really don't have to do anything but spread i mean if you really want to get the pressure spread the defensive line spread the linebackers and then bring this guy down this is going to put you in a position where you have to cover the running back but that's fine i have no problem right over the area where the running back is anyway it's not an issue to cover him but if the running back blocks i can cover whoever i want i'm going to guess pass too even though i don't know if it's going to be a run or a pass you really don't want to do that if you know your opponent's going to pass uh as i was shocked that we didn't actually get uh, that we didn't actually get a, a run play there but we got an instant sack and it didn't come from the area I was expecting. Like I said, a lot of times it's going to come right through the A-gap, but you have a lot of different options here. This guy here doesn't even get blocked and just comes right in. And this is another play where I'm only sending... What I got? I actually have sent... I'm sending six defenders this time. So it's a six on six because we actually have uh, the running backs already picked up the cornerback blitzing. But nobody picks up this guy, and he just comes straight in for the kill. So I'm going to do that again. Like I said, all I got to do is spread everybody, bring this guy down. Part of the reason I'm bringing him down is so that he does get picked up first. That's the whole plan. I want everybody to get picked up first, with, except, with the exception of this late blitzing linebacker who's going to come in last. That's the whole idea. So once again, got to cover. I mean, I can I can really, you know, if I want to, I can baseline. It gives up the look, but it'll get my guys closer to their targets. And then this is going to be the play. I just got to engage with this guard long enough that you know he doesn't really do anything when i drop back and that looked like a scrum. i don't know what that was but it was another sack this play here we have two guys that get in free we got the cornerback on the right side who chases russell wilson out of the pocket and then we have the linebacker on the other side that meets him as you can see this play is so glitchy i thought that they were running a screen play because the guard and the tackle on the right side jump out so much just to try to get wide enough to take out this particular uh this particular blitzing linebacker that they have to jump out so far it's just impossible for them to do it so you can get pressure from multiple areas but i want a gap pressure so to do that if i want to guarantee that that linebacker gets the pressure you just got to bring this cornerback in further the closer he is the better i could also like you know if i really want to i could i could put them on qb contains but i don't find that's really the way to go but that's gonna that's how you're gonna spread this line the most for this a gap look as you can see the running back actually picked up the a gap pressure but he let the linebacker go once again so i didn't quite get that a gap from the position that i was expecting on that particular play but we're gonna do the exact same thing with the overload three press anyway so i'm sure we'll get it here so once again just spread everything and we're gonna bring this guy in blitzer in a little bit because we want him to get picked up first bring our user down we can you know change our, our you know bring our cornerbacks closer by base lining but this is pretty much the look and i really want that linebacker at that angle because this is like i said this is really exactly what a three four odd looks like the the pinch this is really the pinch buck zero all over again as you can see that guy gets right through the middle once again but it's the same look because he just comes right through the middle nobody touches him you could also choose the hot blitz three which would be uh you know the same play it's basically the over three overload three press um but you're sending an additional guy and you're not you don't have any 
um, you know, flat defenders. But you can use this if you really want to kick it up a notch. This is not a bad call. It's another play where you're just going to spread everything and bring this cornerback down. It's very simple. But like I said, you don't have, if you run this play, you really don't have any uh, additional, um, you know, outside coverages. I mean, I could really, if I wanted to run this particular play, I would say putting this guy here, this, um, this safety into a flat like that so that I have at least... Um, something on that side because it's really gonna this is gonna put a lot of burden on me I got to cover a lot on the right side I got to cover all three of these receivers the tight end the receiver and the running back But you're gonna see how the pressure gets in crazy on a play like this because I'm setting so much heat And it's just coming from everywhere So I'm gonna go ahead and end the video there if you guys want to see more videos like this in the future more breakdowns of defenses Please make sure to be a subscriber hit like button let me know in the comment section I'll have some more practice mode style breakdowns popping up on screen on offense and defense and be sure to make sh uh, Keep an eye out for the gameplay of this particular defense coming out early next week it'll probably be like tuesday or wednesday other than that thanks for watching man my shit out need more help or just want to show your support then head over to my patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my bids and more link in the description below